Hey folks, Dave here. I uh, hope everybody's having a good day. My day is going good so far. So with uh, Valentine's Day closing in on us, I thought we would uh, do us a uh, short Valentine's project. I think we'll make a, uh, a postcard. So let's start with drawing out a square. Just draw it out and drop it. And then go up top, make sure your lock is off. We're going to make the height 105 millimeters and the width 155. That's uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of four by six inches. And then hit your selector tool. And then the, uh, the first thing I believe we'll put a line down the center, the traditional separator that goes on a postcard. So just grab a square, draw it out, click your selector tool. We're going to make it smaller than that. So just remember you can use your scroll to, uh, to scroll in and out and you can push down on it and move the entire canvas around. So we're just going to make the width of this separator about 0.5. And then select it and shift and select your outer square. And then you can hit the bullseye button up top. It'll put it right there. Uh, so then we're going to use, uh, we're going to use an offset fill for this. So over on the right, be sure to move that up above your cut line. And actually we're going to, see how long this would take if we just do a fill so you can select fill go up to your preview and you can see that it's one minute 15 seconds uh, just for that small little line but if you make it offset fill it should cut the time down a little bit so 14 seconds so it cuts it down quite a bit so I've uh, done a video recently on fill versus offset fill, and they both have their, their uses, but in most cases, I think you'll find that offset fill is, uh, is the best choice for time saving. Okay, so now uh, let's just put some, uh, grab your pencil over here, and we will put, uh, we'll just do three lines here. So just draw one out. Left click and right click to let it go. Click your selector tool. And then just drag it down to the bottom like so. And then you can go over to the array. And let's do spacing of about maybe four millimeters. If that don't work, we'll do something else. Change the spacing and then you can change and click up, yep, let's change that spacing. Let's make it about 10 millimeters, see how that works out. And then just get you two more lines there. That looks pretty good. More of a time saver with a array when you've got more, more items. Okay, and then up top, I think we'll do the We've got to make a uh, postal mark. So just draw out a line, maybe about that long. And then left click, right click to let it go. Click your selector tool and then select that line. Right click and make sure it is converted to path here. And then you can go over to the uh, node editor. And we're not doing anything fancy. We're just going to make this line a little wavy. You can grab the end and just kind of play with the line a little bit. Like so. And then you can just make it 
look as much like it's got a little wave in it as possible, like that. I think that'll work. And then we can turn it a little bit. And then we can go to array. Make this about three millimeters, maybe even two. Let's go two. And then, I think there's usually four of those. And we'll make these smaller. We're just going to. So here is a good way to demonstrate the difference in the way you select items. If we come from the right, we get a green line. And you can select them, but you're going to select this with it because you only have to touch it if you're using a, if you're coming from the right. If you come from the left, you get a green line. I mean a red line, I'm sorry. And you have to surround the entire object to be able to select it. So if we come from the left, we can pick these up without picking up the outer piece. So now that we have it, we can just kind of resize it and make it look like a postmark. Now, another thing is these can't be filled. These have to be set for a line. So I'm going to go grab maybe another palette, like so, make it a line, move it to the top, and the reason is if you tried to burn it, it would tell you that, the, that they're not closed. So if this was set for fill, and then we tried to preview it, it would tell us we couldn't, uh, we can't do it because it's not closed. Now, if you, if you have a large uh, project you're working on and it tells you there's four shapes out of a couple of hundred or whatever you have, then you can click show me and it will highlight the ones that, that are messed up so you can correct them. But if we just change that back to line, then we're okay. A little sidebar there, but helpful. So let's move this up to where it would normally be, somewhere around in here. And then we need to make us a, a stamp. And there's probably a lot of ways to do this, but here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go grab the uh, text tool, and we are just going to make some W's. And it probably don't matter which, uh, which script we have. We're just going to do three capital W's. That works fine. And then we're going to resize these. Let me get this up so we can see what's happening. And we're just going to, we just want it to look squiggly around the edges like a stamp does. And then we're going to duplicate that, pull it up, go to a range. We're going to rotate it. And once we put this together, we'll resize it to make it the size of the stamp. For the stamp we're going to use anyway. So then you can just flip this around here. And then you want to get one more for the top. So just bring it out, go to a range, flip it over, put it on top. Then you can grab the entire piece, group it together. In this, we will make a Offset fill. I think we can get away with that. But always test and see. See if it's going to work, whatever you're using. And then we pull this over here. Make it a little smaller. 
something like that. Uh, and then I think we'll put a heart inside. So I will put a, uh, a link in the description to this heart. I'm going to duplicate it so we can put one over here. And we're just going to resize this. And maybe turn it a little bit. You can grab the corner right here and turn it. And just size it up so it will fit inside. The stamp and then we'll just cut that out so just make that a, a cut line maybe my toolbar is getting in the way today okay so we'll cut that out uh this one over here i think we'll just make it a little smaller and we will make it a Offset fill. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's make these kind of touch a little bit well, closer to it. That looks fun. So let's get, uh, let's write something on here. We'll write this brush strip here. Is it, it engraves pretty good, so we'll just use that. Let's say, let me get all caps here. I've got my keyboard down low today. So just write something out, whatever you want to. Pull it out. We'll put this on a little bit of an angle. Turn it around and then we will resize it. It looks pretty good. And we'll just grab another one and maybe put XOXO. I think that means hugs and kisses. I don't know. I don't know if I ever wrote that. And we can turn this a little bit, resize it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put that there, and then we can get another one. And we'll write out Dave. You don't have to use Dave, you can use your own name. But if you want to use Dave, feel free to do that. All right, so we're going to leave all of this as uh, offset fill. And then it should be to someone. So let's, uh, we're going to make this two rows, but we're going to change the font between the, uh, the name and uh, the two. So we'll make this two rows. And then we will go up, get us another text tool. Click here and we'll change this to Arial. All caps and just make it two. Man, my fingers are fatter than normal today. Thanks, trying to grab everything there. All right, two. And then maybe be my Valentine. And I will do these as separate. Sometimes it won't get on the line you're working with if you try to. Uh, just continue. 
and hit the return key. So we'll put it here and then move it around to where we want it. And there we go. I guess we should put an exclamation point on it so she'll know I'm serious. And that looks pretty good. Let's see if we left anything off. No, no I think we're good. So, so over, to over to the right, uh, uh, you cut some layers. Always be sure that you're engraved or, or is above the cut line. Because, uh, uh, I mean, often I've forgotten to do that. And then it'll cut first and then try to engrave. And it just, it just makes a mess. So okay, let me uh, let me uh, cut this out, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, okay folks, be back shortly. shortly. Okay, folks, I think we're ready. Uh, we're going to cut this out of a three millimeter basswood that is uh, solid. It's not a plywood, and we'll see how this works. If it don't work good, we'll uh, we'll try something else. Okay, here we go. All right, well, let me clean this up a little bit and we'll take a closer look at it. Okay, well, here's our finished project. Uh, it turned out really nice, too. Let me see if I can get it, get it closer. So this solid three millimeter basswood is uh, it's pretty soft. So the engraving went, went a little deeper than I expected it to, but it, but it looks nice. And if you put some varnish on it or some... Uh, some oil or something then uh then it'd look even better it's pretty simple to do but it looks nice uh, i really appreciate you folks watching uh, i hope it was helpful hope you learned something and uh, like always if you have any questions about it or questions about something else uh, with with laser in general uh, just drop me a comment and i'll be glad to help out in any way i can so uh, we'll try to do another uh valentine's project possibly two but at least one more uh, so you folks check back often for uh, for new videos and take care and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you